All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to be going over an article, and the title is, Are We Creating Unhappy Women? Now, this article is written by a woman, and obviously she's talking about the feminist movement and the guidance that women have gotten over the years to obviously go out and be successful and have careers and all that. And she wants to know, you know, have they created unhappy women because all these women have gone out and gotten careers, professional degrees, and so forth to obviously rival us guys. And obviously, since a lot of these women feel that they are obviously better than men, now they're unhappy because they're older, they want to get married, guys don't want to get married, they're single and unhappy. Now, we all know that when it comes to women, you can never make them happy. There's always something. For those of you who've been in relationships, for those of you who've been married or are married, you know this more better than anybody else. So I'm going to go through this article here and share my thoughts on the issue. So again, the article is called, are we creating unhappy women? And the author says, <clears throat> A friend of mine is terribly worried that our next generation of high-achieving women may be destined for unhappiness because they will have difficulty in finding husbands. Big surprise. Having a hard time finding husbands because men are waking the hell up and they're not going to get sucked into this crap. And she questions, Are our self-affirming messages to today's smart capable young women, setting them up for future misery. This well-intentioned concern raises some interesting points. First, it assumes that a person needs to be married or to have a soulmate to be happy. Well, that's bullshit. While most of us would agree that humans are happier with companionship, hence solitary confinement being a punishment, and that we would feel blessed to find a soulmate, many may take issue with the implication that marriage is necessary for personal happiness. Well, the idea of being married has been so, so ingrained both with religious and societal conditioning, both for men and women, it isn't just with women, a lot of guys buy into this crap, that they've been so brainwashed to think that if you don't find the one and you don't settle down and get married, you're going to be miserable and alone, and they sell all this crap in movies. You watch, you've seen it before, I'm sure even the biggest hard asses watching this video know, have seen some movie or know about where they show guys, men or women, and they're alone and miserable. And obviously the, the source of the key to finding happiness is that it's finding the one to make them feel better. And that's bullshit. Because believe me, plenty of people that have woken the hell up and that are single, provide good lives for themselves, dating around or on their own, they're happy as a pig and shit. Goes on to say, second, this concern takes a traditional view of what constitutes a suitable partner. Historically, women have been deemed to be successful only if they marry at or above their station, whereas men could marry anyone they wanted to, especially if the woman was beauty, was a beauty. Yeah, for us guys, it's all about looks. That's just the reality. That is the ugly truth. So we don't care if the woman's beautiful, at least in our eyes, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If we see a woman is beautiful, we don't care if she has an advanced degree. We don't care what her job is. We don't care how much money she makes. We don't care how much money she has. We don't care if she works as a cash register at Target. If she's hot and she has a great body and she's feminine and um, we're in, that's it. But for women, they got a whole laundry list of shit. But especially, obviously, men that have money, make money, successful, all that. That's why I urge you guys that are dating that will help you along Work on your purpose. Work on gaining success. That will help you vastly when it comes to dating women. But don't do it just so you can get women. Do it for yourself so you can provide a great life for yourself and not need help from anybody. But yes, that will help you in the dating department if that's what you're doing. It says, therefore, the more educated and commercially successful a woman is, the smarter the talent pool from which she can choose a husband. And the woman says, are we really still governed by these traditional societal norms? Yeah, a lot of people are. It says here, as well, this worry assumes that men won't feel comfortable dating or marrying a successful woman. And if he does, there is the future implication that if the woman who ultimately will have to make a binary choice between career, success, and family life. I'm going to read that part again real quick. It says here, as well, this worry assumes that men won't feel comfortable dating or marrying a successful woman. Well, for a lot of guys I've talked to that either are getting married or have been married, the issue isn't if she's successful. The issue is when these successful women become these masculine, 
ball busting bitches. That's what we have a problem with. And usually it kind of goes hand in hand. We're not attracted to masculine women the same way it'd be like two dudes dating. And that's a lot of things that these women can't understand. M men, masculine men are not attracted to masculine women. That's how it is. Now, you can get guys that are feminine guys, beta males. They may be attracted to these strong alpha female masculine women. That's the only case. And, well, thanks to the feminist movement, you have a lot more of guys like this today. Now, hopefully, as time goes on and awareness is spread, this trend is going to reverse because lots of guys are waking the hell up. But it's going to take time. And it says here, you may say that statistically speaking, my friend is right to worry. People do tend to want to find a partner and have a family. Many men may still feel threatened by high-powered women, and societal norms still hold that sway, their sway. But surely, the solution is not to stop women from pursuing their aspirations and impose our choices on them, with her question mark, she says. She says here, personally, I think the world has a great capacity to change. Change for who? Change for the feminist movement or for what us guys want? It depends on who wants this change, what the change is. She says, I recently read about another example contrary to my friend's worrisome scenario. Julia Gillard, the newly elected Prime Minister of Australia, has found happiness with her <laughs> hairdresser turned estate agent boyfriend, who also happens to be a whiz in the kitchen and a highly supportive of her career. So the, the uh, female Prime Minister of Australia, her, say her boyfriend? Yeah, it says her boyfriend is an ex-hairdresser. How many guys are hairdressers? What type of guy would be a hairdresser? I have no problem if a guy's a hairdresser. Let me make that clear. But by and large, most men that are hairdressers are, are either gay or they're going to be very uh, feminine men, beta males. So you got the Prime Minister of Australia, who I guarantee you is a ball-busting masculine woman because she wouldn't get that way other, uh, get there at this point in time otherwise. And so the only guy she can get that's going to put up with that or be attracted to that masculine energy is a feminine, a very feminine man. So it just goes to show right then and there. But that is the intent of the feminist movement. You know, in this day and age, it's not about equality. It's about emasculating men, making us weak, and letting them be dominant, and turning us into little bitches. Well, times are changing. At least I'm going to say things are going to slowly change. We will have the last laugh. Continues on to say, while there's only one more example, it nonetheless gives us all greater hope. This is from the woman's perspective, gives them greater hope. Greater hope that successful women are finding wonderful men in, in all walks of life and vice versa. As they say, oh God, why marry a doctor when you can be a doctor yourself? And maybe there's some great guy who would prefer to marry a doctor rather than to be one himself. You just have to be clear in what you're looking for. Sure, again, feminized beta males. And while statistics may portray an accurate picture on an aggregate basis, they are pretty much irrelevant when it comes to a person's situation. For example, just because only 20% of people survive a particular type of cancer doesn't mean a thing if you haven't had it. Irrespective of the odds for the individual, the outcome is binary. You either live or die. She goes on to say, so as individuals, we can afford to ignore the historical odds. After all, it takes just one. It happens all the time. You just have to be open-minded and on the lookout for the scenario you want. Back to the uh, thing about the one. All you need is just one. The whole idea of the one is the biggest bunch of crap ever. There's nearly 8 billion people on the planet, or we're getting close to that. Half of them are men, half of them are women. And the idea that just one person on there is going to be the one for you is the biggest bunch of crap I've ever heard. And it says here, and saying, in life there are no guarantees that you will get what you want, but at least you have to try. Otherwise, you truly do end up miserable. And that is a sure thing. So, that's just going to show right here what I've been talking about all along. <clears throat> Alright guys, so that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below what you think about this article. Let me know what you think, and be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I will talk to you next time.